So a while back, I wrote a importer for Unity that was designed for bringing in assets from Texture Packer, uh, which is a really wonderful third-party program uh, that exports to all sorts of formats. Uh, it's useful for bringing in sprite sheets and texture atlases from uh, uh, from raw image data and converting it into pretty much whatever format you can think of. And a very, very amazing program. They've done a great job with it. Um, there is a free version of Texture Packer as well as a pro version. I will definitely cover um, tutorials on both of these. Uh, but in the meantime, the reason something like this needs to exist, just so we're not uh, totally lost for this uh, little tutorial, uh, if you had a bunch of textures that you wanted to bring into Unity as though they were 3D objects you could manipulate or add physics to or anything along those lines. Um, there really isn't a quick and easy built-in way to do that with Unity, unfortunately. Um, so, for example, if we just drag the textures in here, um, they show up, they have uh, well, they're textures, and that's pretty much it. If you wanted to bring them into your scene, you can't drag them in, you can make a GUI texture out of them, and uh, then you get a, a two-dimensional object that's not actually part of your uh, part of your three-dimensional scene or part of your main game view, but uh, rather sitting on the GUI layer. Uh, there are other plugins um, that exist in the Unity community uh, that are uh, adequate to bring in things like this, but I've found myself really just wanting plain, simple meshes and prefabs to come out of Texture Packer to manipulate later. Uh, so, I'm gonna walk you through how my Texture Packer importer plugin works. First things first, uh, open Texture Packer. Um, the data format you should use is Unity 3D. Um, it's worth noting that JSON hash table and Unity 3D are the same thing with exception uh, to the file extension. This will export a TXT file. Uh, texture output format, uh, I generally prefer to use PNG. The rest of these settings uh, are all fine. You don't have to mess with any of these or you can tweak them to your heart's content. They will all import correctly. Uh, however, the free version of Texture Packer, uh, and we are looking at the pro version right now, uh, does not support uh, certain options here. So I'm going to reset this to basic, and I'm going to turn trim off. Uh, this will mimic uh, the free version of Texture Packer. All right, so the way I prefer to work uh, is to, the very first thing I do is save out my, my TPS project file. Um, and I generally save it in the same folder uh, as the images I'm trying to import. So I tend to name them similarly too, which is personal preference. Um, so I'm going to create a TPS file named cardsuits.tps. Uh, so now we have cardsuits.tps and a cardsuits folder with PNG textures in it, or PNG images. Uh, I'm then going to drag cardsuits into here as a smart folder. Uh, the benefit to this is if you ever added additional sprites to this folder and then reopen Texture Packer, it will automatically pick them up or pick up changes and repack it for you. Uh, let's see. So save the Texture Packer file and hit publish. It'll let you know uh, what went on, if there's a problem. Um, it'll definitely let you know if you started using any pro, uh, Texture Packer pro uh, options. Uh, and that's it for Texture Packer. So that generated a cardsuits.png, which is a packed version of our textures, and a cardsuits.txt, which is a JSON definition of all of our sprites. So the next thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of setup inside of Unity. Um, just for, for pure workflow, create a folder called sprites, create another folder called card suits, uh, and again this is totally personal preference. And I'm going to drag both the card suits PNG and card suits TXT into the new folder. Now we have a base texture, or an atlas texture, 
uh, and our txt file. Uh, the texture packer plugin uh, extends uh, the right click menus for uh, the project view in Unity. You can also find it through the assets menu in here, but I really advise working here. Uh, in the right click menu under texture packer, there is now two options. Uh, one is process to meshes and one is process to prefabs. Process to meshes uh, will only import uh, the assets as meshes if you already have a material set up for yourself or you're doing something custom or we're just doing a small update. Uh, process to prefabs is the full process of creating material uh, using a default shader that's included uh, in here and generating meshes, textures, material, the whole, the whole work. Uh, so let's see what that does. Right click on the txt file, process to prefabs, let it do its thing. Uh, it generated a material named the same as the texture and also generated meshes and prefabs. Uh, at this point, you can just drag it on into Unity or drag it on into your scene and you now can use it just like you would use any other prefab. And that pretty much covers texture packer import. Uh, there's not a whole lot else to say about that. Um, you can add whatever you want to these. You can add your sphere collider and a rigid body and let it do its its regular thing. Alright, so that covers the basic uh, texture packer import. Um, I covered, uh, or I, I mentioned that this is strictly for texture packer free, um, so the features that I'm going to go over now are only really available in, in the professional version of Texture Packer, or the paid version of Texture Packer. Uh, so, let's create a new Texture Packer file. And save it out as advanced.tps. We're going to bring in the advanced folder. Uh, and this time I've got all the uh, advanced settings back in here. So we have max rex um, as the algorithm selected uh, and trim mode is set to trim. These are actually the default settings when you install a texture packer. So you shouldn't have to do much when you're, uh, uh, when you're setting this up. Uh, and again, I set data format to Unity 3D. These are set as my defaults, but they're, you will have to set them yourself and hit save defaults on your own. Um, now, something really important to note here uh, is the position of these textures on their given atlas. Uh, so I'm going to open up uh, Photoshop here and let's use CS6. I think most people are familiar with the CS3 series and above. Um, the center of this image is right in the center. There's a whole lot of blank space around the outside, but with the paid version of Texture Packer, it's going to go and trim all that excess space off for us. Um, and the pivot point of the prefab that gets imported will be exactly in the middle of the original image. So it'll be where the, uh, the guides here in Photoshop are depicting. This is really useful for setting up sprites that you want to stand on their feet um, for example, this dog uh, piece of clip art is centered uh, such that its feet are above this plane, which means when you import it as a prefab, it's going to be standing above the ground plane. All right, so got all this set up, save, publish, same as before and drag advanced.txt and advanced.png into Unity. Uh, we can do folder for ourselves. And texture packer process to prefabs. When you bring these in, they're going to be set up, uh, as I described earlier, with the pivot point at the, uh, the center of the original PNG file. Um, 
So the texture gets packed very efficiently uh, without all that excess blank space, but you still get the benefit of being able to preset the pivot of your object or your sprite uh, by keeping it uh, aligned however you wish with the, with the center of the image in mind. All right. So I've also included, uh, excuse, let's see, the check mark. I've also included uh, a set of three shaders uh, with texture packer. They are opaque, transparent, and vertex color. Uh, by default, uh, the materials will always come in as transparent um, because they're just really common. Uh, these support uh, texture tinting, alpha fading, uh, everything you would expect from a, a generic sprite. Uh, opaque is exactly what you would expect from opaque. It's just whatever the texture looks like, that's what you're going to get. Uh, so for tiles, this would be very useful. Uh, and vertex color. This is an interesting one, um, and it doesn't have uh, any tweakable properties uh, within the shader. Uh, but what it does have uh, is the ability to change each corner, uh, change each corner, each corner's color, or use an additional mesh that's uh, colored differently, uh, or spawn a whole bunch of these things and change each object, each sprite individually, without adjusting its material, which means they can all still be batched together. Um, that's a really advanced topic that I'm not going to go into, um, but I have included. Uh, a quick script or a quick function to attach what I would call a shadow mesh uh, to an existing uh, imported mesh or imported sprite. Um, so under texture packer uh, with the mesh you want to do this selected uh, or multiple meshes you want to do this selected uh, select attach shadow mesh um, and what this does is create a vertex color mapping uh, of black and half transparent and attaches it to the original mesh. Um, so if you wanted to do a sprite that cast a small shadow on the ground, this would be a great way to go about doing it. Um, it orders the faces and vertices uh, such that there will never be any uh, texture overlap or overdraw uh, or clipping with itself. Uh, so this is just a very efficient way to uh, get a really good looking sprite into a 3D scene. Uh, without a whole lot of work and with using the exact same texture to generate the shadow. Uh, other things. Let's see, so I brought out the check mark earlier. Um, I've also included uh, my mesh tweaker tools or some, a subset of my mesh tweaker tools uh, that are useful for tweaking meshes uh, so you can rotate, uh, realign, or rotate, or pretty much whatever you want. Uh, it's just a quick way to cycle through and make changes to meshes you'd already imported. Uh, and it does work in batch, so it will rotate everything you select. Uh, let's say we don't want any of that, and let's just go back to texture packer and process meshes. So if you made changes to the prefabs and you want to overwrite those changes, only re-import the meshes and it will reset. Uh, it will overwrite the vertex, vertex color and UVs of the meshes without overwriting the assets, so you won't lose any links to any of the other prefabs. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Um, ah, yes. Uh, texture packer facing. Uh, this is a simple preference uh, that allows you to select the uh, input, uh, sorry, the import uh, direction from texture packers. So if you want them to face up, you set that to up, and you re-import, and it will ensure that the sprites that have been imported uh, are facing the direction you've selected. All right, that pretty much covers all of it. I uh, hope people get some use out of this. I am releasing it under MIT license as well. Uh, there are uh, these three shaders uh, were largely sourced from the Unify Wiki, uh, so kudos to them for helping everybody out with that. And there is also the mini JSON 
a modified mini JSON uh, set of extensions in class uh, that was created by a whole bunch of people and it's based on uh, someone else's JSON implementation that's linked in the source for that, that file. So again, kudos to them for being awesome and sharing their stuff. Uh, Alright, uh, have fun and keep using Unity because it's fun. Yeah.